My Layla was a really wonderful wife. Some of my friends even invite me for winning her heart, and at the wedding someone joked, Look how smart, beautiful, and funny you've become. I was fascinated by her, especially since she was younger than me. She often brought joy to my evenings, and I fell in love with her not only for her charm, but also for her incredible listening skills. I work in a military environment where stressful situations often arise, and Lila sat across from me in the kitchen, stared into my eyes, and asked, Tell me. Which I did. She listened attentively, sometimes made suggestions, and somehow the solutions always seemed to come by themselves. After our wedding, Lila decided to get a second higher education and study psychology. She expressed interest in also joining the military, where she can get a position as a psychologist. At first I tried to dissuade her. Layla, it's hard for a woman to work in a male-dominated environment, especially with our boss and his absurdities. Our commander especially liked our parades, and let's just say the women in our department often left planning meetings in tears. I'll just work a little bit, gain experience, and then find a more interesting job. My wife reassured me. I registered her, and she started working. I did my best to keep an eye on her, to make her feel comfortable. And then one day my boss said, Oh, invite your wife. Let's see what she advises us. There was some kind of commotion at work, and he was pacing around the office, not knowing how to handle the situation. I was worried about Lila, but I called her anyway. After her meeting with him, I asked, So, did he raise his voice at you? No, he was calm. He's not bad at all. You must be mistaken about him, she replied. It seemed strange to me, but I decided that psychologists should have their own quirks. From that point on, Layla began visiting the boss's office regularly, and soon he was calling for her whenever he was stressed. He would request her by name over the intercom, making it obvious to everyone that she was meeting with him. Whispers began circulating that she had gotten in his good graces. She'd notice when he was upset, sometimes yelling at someone, or when he stormed out of the headquarters in a fit. She would then go in to check on him, and after their talks, he would emerge a changed man, smiling engaging with us, and even asking about our challenges and how he could help. Eventually, my colleagues started approaching Layla, asking her to advocate for them with the boss or to help resolve their issues. Some needed to take vacation days early, while others sought time off. I warned her, Layla, this won't end well. You'll either get pulled into the chaos or... She interrupted me. Don't be so dramatic. Maverick and I have a purely professional relationship, she assured me, and in response, she joked that she might even turn me into an office worker. I must admit... Layla and the personnel officer worked closely together in a small office. Once the boss took a special interest in her, people started turning to her for help. Many came with their problems, not just to report to the boss. Some had personal issues they needed to discuss. It became clear that Layla wasn't going anywhere. She thrived on structure 
and needed her own space to work, so the boss rearranged the office layout to give her a separate room. That's when my Layla seemed to vanish. I stopped by less frequently to check in on her. At that time, several new hires joined the team, and the boss brought in his own connections. It seemed like every time I dropped by, there was a man in her office, whether it was a new candidate or the boss himself. One day, a colleague approached me and said, you really should keep an eye on your wife. I saw her with the boss yesterday. They were adjusting their clothes. Honestly, I brushed it off as gossip, but to ease my mind, I decided to visit her office. When I walked in, I saw them embracing, and I shot out of there like a cannon, not returning for three days. No hard feelings, but this is your fault. Layla said when I finally stumbled home. He's kind, supportive, and always there for me, while you only vented your frustrations without caring about my feelings. I didn't argue. I simply requested a transfer to a different unit, away from them. For a long time, Layla struggled to move on and I learned from our hunting friends that the boss was still smitten with her. I had even pushed for her officer rank to be upgraded early. Eventually, whispers began circulating about some tension between them. But what was going on? I had no idea. I slowly started to move on, but one day, I ran into that same colleague who finally opened my eyes. Your Layla left the psychology unit and transferred out. Apparently, the boss's wife had caught wind of their affair, and she stormed into the headquarters, causing a massive uproar. They managed to defuse the situation, but the boss made it clear. Either she could leave peacefully, or she would find herself out of a job if he was forced out because of her. Well, no one felt sorry for him, and it seemed like she was the one who ultimately suffered and had to leave. You know, I still think about her a lot, but I can't bring myself to forgive her. She reached out to meet me once and asked for a chance to talk, but I ignored her message. Since then, I've avoided psychologists entirely. I've developed an aversion to them.